Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And in answer to that song, if it had not been but for the Lord on my side, where would I be? I think I'd be someplace in a little locked away cell on some deserted island or someplace. Uh, I wasn't really that bad, but sometimes when you're not that bad, that's what gets you in trouble. <laughs> Amen. Well, we welcome you to this, uh, our morning service. And before I forget it, I need to announce that the flowers on the altar are uh, given to the glory of God and in loving memory of Mary W. Royal on the occasion of her birthday by Mary Lou Roy. We certainly thank you for that remembrance and for the beautiful flowers. And I understand that, uh, well, I wanna make an announcement too about the offering plates. We've been trying to figure out the most strategic place to place the offering plates since we don't have an offering formally during the center of our service. But they're on either side of the back table in case uh, you have a mind to do that. And now we have some announcements from uh, uh, Mary Lou. I'm going to take this off just to do this, if I may. <laughs> uh, I, have just, I have just two things that I want to um, uh, uplift to you. First of all, I could not have done any of this if it hadn't been for my very best right hand. So I have dedicated one of these arrangements to Diane today, and the other one is for my mother. And the second thing is that it's pecan time, and I don't know, I know Jerry has been sick, and so I just wanted to say to those of you that were here to spread the word, if you will, um, the pecans are going to be, uh, I'm going to ask for the number of bags of pecans by the 15th, which is a Friday. October. And of October, yes, thank you. And <clears throat> they're uh, $11 a piece, they're exactly the same. And then I'm going to try to get the final order out so that we have them by November um, on the 22nd, which is uh, uh, Friday also. So you can pay me anytime you want, but the deadline, deadline is the 22nd. And I hope we can get at least 24 so that I don't have to go to Portsmouth to pick them up. They'll mail them to me. Thank you. This is a tag team announcements today. And I'm wearing two hats. Um, the first one, Mary Lou and I and Janet want to welcome all the UMW ladies back. And we're having our first meeting October the 5th in person in the fellowship hall at, from 11 to 12, and we are following all the um, guidelines that the uh, United Methodist Church has, has given us. And, as is, and it's a joint meeting between the Joy Circle and the Good Time Girls, so everybody is invited, including Pastor Mac, and if any of the gentlemen are chauffeuring their lady friends here, you're welcome to stay too. Um, Traditionally, we bring our own sandwich, snack, whatever, uh, to eat, and we'll tr leave a few minutes at the end of the meeting to, to do that and have some fellowship. So, put on your calendar, October 5th, uh, 11 a.m. Now, my other hat is the crop walk, coming up in um, October the 17th, there's information out in the, in the uh, narthex about it. Most of you that have been here any number of times uh, know what the crop walk, walk is about. 
but it's especially needed during the pandemic. It supplies, it helps thrive in the food bank locally with food and, and things necessary for people who are having a, a struggle. Um, crop walk funds also help uh, with follow-up from the hurricanes like Ida, uh, the wildfires out west where people are moved out of their houses, um, like and that all kinds of natural disasters. And they also help to uh, in poor countries to provide things like chickens, fish, um, clean water, uh, things to make people sustainable. Uh, they can raise their food and then they'll have extra to sell and that makes their livelihood sustainable. It's a hand up, not a hand out. So pray for us, uh, for the walk, pray for um, uh, the uh, One of them that we might be interested in is Phoebus's um, Bazaar, which is October the 2nd, and Nancy Black will have her, some of her artwork on uh, for sale. So I just want to pass that on, on to everyone, and if, I'm going to hopefully get a list put in the, in the um, connection uh, of the, some of these other uh, bazaars and festivals that are going on. If you want to know prior to that, just see me. Praise the Lord. I hope you keep all of those announcements in mind. Uh, before we move on, I need to recognize a few folks. Uh, we don't want any strangers with us. We welcome everybody. Um, I, in the front, I have our youngest son, Kamani, uh, Minister Nix, and Minister Nix, <laughs> and their daughter, Victory. Uh, they were stationed in South Korea, but now live in uh, uh, what's the name of that little town? Burke. Burke, Virginia. And they came down for the weekend. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think there's a gentleman among us whose name is Eddie Womack. <laughs> and I think perhaps he may have uh, an introduction to make. Yes, I'd like to introduce my fiance, Connie Brockett. She's from Spring Hill, Florida. February the 12th. Please come by if you have a better and take an angel or a hug. Amen. Well, we welcome you, Connie, and we welcome you, uh, minister and minister, and uh, the prevenient minister. She'll be a minister one day. Amen. A victory. Amen. So it gives a new meaning in our family when we say uh, there's victory in Christ. Uh, we have our own victory that we can uh, introduce. Would you join me now in our call to worship? If it had not been God who was on our side, if it had not been God who was on our side, Are any among us suffering? Are any among us cheerful? Are any among us sick? Our help is in our God. Call upon God, creator and rescuer. God is on our side. Would you join me now in our opening prayer? Eternal God, you create us and you rescue us. Be with us. Help us know how much we need you. Teach us that no other power can support us like your power as you share your power with us. Teach us to be Christ to the world, proclaiming your reign for all people. As you lavish your love upon us, help us receive that love and offer it to the world 
In Jesus' name, amen. A hymn of praise, uh, you can sing along if you are able. It is hymn number 577 in our hymnal, God of Grace and God of Glory. <laughs> I'm sorry that uh, Courtney could not be with us this morning. Um, usually the second and third Sunday she's with us as our guest musician, but she had other things to take care of today. So we appreciate her input. Uh, after our prayer of illumination, before illumination, I believe our scripture will be read by Diane Walker. Uh, would you join me in our prayer for illumination? Living God, help us so to hear your holy word that we may truly understand, that understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able uh, for the reading from the Gospel of Mark. Teacher, said John, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we told him to stop, because he was not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said, for no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me, for whoever is not against us is for us. Truly I tell you, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose their reward. If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them if a large millstone were hung around their neck and they were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, 
cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands to go into hell where the fire never goes out. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where the worms that eat them do not die and the fire is not quenched. Everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? Have salt among yourselves and be at peace with each other. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. And now we're open to hear any uh, prayers or announcements of joy and certainly any concerns that you may have. Do we have any concerns or joys this morning? That's Rod. Ritter, Rod Ritter. And continued prayers for Frank, Colin, Frank, and Selena. Any others? We all are reasonably healthy and well. Uh, so I expect to hear some joys. Any joys this morning? Just couldn't have an antibiotic today and keep it open. Yes. Amen. And, and Dick back from his uh, recent trip. And I'm so certainly glad to have uh, son and daughter and granddaughter. You're trying to catch up with us. Something old, something new. <laughs> Would you join me as we... Um, Pastor Matthew? Yes. Let me add two in. Um, our Llewellyn family have not been with us since the pandemic, but um, they had a major celebration yesterday. Their grandson was married. Um, he and, and um, his fiance had a very special engagement Of course, there's a joy that the uh, scientists have come up with the, with the appropriate dose of the vaccine to give to our, some of our young people. Uh, 
it sure is a joy for all of us. And we won't stop until we hear the news that even the younger children will be uh, able to receive that vaccination. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. Amen. All right. Would you pray with me for just a moment? All things come from you, O oh God. And with gratitude, we return to you what is yours. You created all that is and with love formed us in your image. When our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. All that we are and all that we have is a trust from you. And so in gratitude for all your gifts, we offer you ourselves and all that we have in union with Christ's offering for us. By your Holy Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I ask you to continue to pray for um, Frank and Selena and uh, for Carrie and for all those who are, remain on our sick list. Amen? Amen? Would you join me now as we pray our Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. And all who are able, if you will stand and join us in the recitation of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And our hymn of preparation this morning is from The Faith We Sing, Selection 2176, Make Me a Servant. And you may stand if you wish, or you may be seated.
say it is. I forgot to announce that we are have begun um, with a Hispanic Heritage Week month. Uh, I think they're on to something. They started it the 15th of one month, and it lasts through the to the 15th of the next month. Uh, we might learn some lessons from that. Um, but we do appreciate all our Hispanic neighbors and friends. And uh, I don't know how we can celebrate that except to say thank you, Lord, for those who are different from us but still the same. Amen. Uh, would you pray with me now? You know, with this, the name of this sermon, it's the economy, saints. I do need some prayer. Would you pray with me? Lord, I thank you for this day, for this morning's rising, for the rising of the sun and for the warmth of the blood that runs freely in our veins. We thank you, Lord, that you are present with us. That no matter where we go, we go to the ends of the earth, you are still with us. Now, Lord, we ask you to take us in the hollow of your hand. Bless us that we might be blessings for others. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Let the church say amen. Amen. It's the economy, saints. In examining and researching the gospel lesson this week, I had a difficult time assigning a title. The more I read and studied this offering, the more elusive a title seemed. For some reason, the commercial on TV with Kevin Hart kept residence in my mind. Uh, you know the one where he is passing out information about his credit card as he encounters his last neighbor who is just a few feet away. His neighbor asks, why are you shouting? Or why are you yelling? I don't know the exact words. Mr. Hart responds, because that's what I do. I think he borrowed this phrase from former President Obama after he made a three-point basket during a campaign appearance or something. But it was after some serious meditation and contemplation that the phrase was transformed in my mind. This is what we do. When our goal is to enter the kingdom of God, and obviously to avoid the unquenchable fire. There are words of instruction in these scriptures and not a formula for self-mutilation. Anyway, this was the genesis of my title. Rarely do we understand our personal, family, or church participation as an economy. Most think of an economy in terms of money and business transactions. Well, we engage in similar transactions as individuals, families, and surely in the church. We do deal with money, but we also develop, disperse, divide, and distribute gifts and talents, information, services, goodwill and good works to benefit those who live and grow within our system. An economy is defined as the large set of interrelated production and consumption activities that aid in determining how scarce resources are allocated. I, I found it on Google, so it must be the truth. In an economy, the production and consumption of goods and services are used to fulfill the needs of those living and operating within it. Surely most economies are based on established principles, necessary constraints, and constants. 
including clear goals which they or it seeks to attain. Mark, the ninth chapter, the 38th through the 50th verses that was read this morning, points us toward the kingdom of God, new life, or transformation within it as the destination. It must be the new life in Christ, as the remedies offered are not available to us before we are born into this present life. The word of God says, it is better for you to enter life maimed, lame, and partially blind than to enter hell, body whole, but soul on fire. The reading begins with the report of John concerning someone casting out demons in the name of Jesus without a membership card in the United Methodist Church. John said, well, we tried to stop him because he was not following us. Jesus, and I paraphrase, said, you are correct, John. She was not a member of the Methodist Youth Movement, nor did she attend the Epworth League or meet with Wesleyan counselors in college. But she is not to be stopped because of these useless merit badges. Instead, ask her if she knows Jesus and the pardoning of her sin, and whether she has been sanctified by his blood, and whether she believes in the resurrection from the dead. It does not matter whether she is Baptist, Pentecostal, Presbyterian, Adventist, Unitarian or not. <laughs> if she loves the Lord Jesus, let her be or help her do whatever it is that she is doing in the name of Jesus. I believe that this scripture is saying that it does not matter where she matriculated. Her faith alone is her badge of authority. And further, let it be known that none of you had better do anything to inhibit her growth cause her to falter in her faith or block one of her blessings. Anyone who causes, allows, or harms any such child or prevenient sinner will be subject to eternal damnation in the lake of fire that never cools down. And that is a Mac fact. It's getting hot in here. If you cannot say amen, just say ouch. And before that, it's the economy, saints. All of this applies to individual salvation, family structure, or life in the church. When I was young, these scriptures scared me. I was scared by the intensity of the consequences of any wrongdoing. I was frightened by the accuracy of the admonition. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. If your foot leads you astray, cut it off. If your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. I, I used to get the impression that before this life was done, I would likely be one-armed, crippled, half-blind, and crazy. I was so scared that I did not want to go to birthday parties, talk to girls, play on Sundays, or do anything bad for fear of the consequences that might await my bad behavior. Of course, after I kept my hand, after my first stolen sip of my sister's sacred 7-Up and my first borrowed piece of her delicious lemon meringue pie. When I found I still had my hand, I lost a little bit of my fear. Perhaps losing my hand or foot might have been the correct prescription to help me avoid many sins that came later. 
And like many of you, the truth of the gospel came slowly to me, and sometimes late. But I can stand before you now and shout hallelujah, because it did at last come. And I hope on time. I could expand on my own life and trials as examples. But I told you that the church is an economy under the appointing and anointing of God. And some folks develop a false sense of kingdom security just because we are members, attenders, or pretenders in a church that purports that it is a Christian economy. In a lot of churches, personal piety and Christ-like activities are a pretext for developing a club mentality. Sometimes the preacher and the teacher are professing and addressing each other, but not laying their all at the altar. At some other church or churches, the head deacon is more committed to making his name great than lifting the name of Jesus. Somewhere the choir is known as the war department because members might learn how to sing like angels, but their songs are not directed to the worship of the Christ of Calvary. It sometimes happens that members of the assembly take no interest in learning how best to perform their sworn or assigned duties, but instead the glory in the title of their office. Sometimes what they do is by assignment, and sometimes it is by their own choosing. I, I'm just saying that the secretary or the sextant may not accept the understanding that their charge and duties are expressions of their praise to the Almighty. And the trustee board might have forgotten that what they oversee is truly a trust of and for the Lord to be used as a landmark for Christian service and not a personal glory ground for their own egos. In the church, some folks want to be pushed by the pastor while others push the pastor. I mean, pray for the pastor until something happens. <laughs> if the church is the body of Christ, then each member should seek to be a, a righteous example of Christ so that others will see the light of their presence and seek a relationship with them. The Bible says that even in a church, there should be a system in place that serves to enhance its worth in the economy of the coming kingdom. In such a church, each person is a somebody whose goal is to offer Christ to anybody and whose personal reward is bound in the journey toward eternity in the already but not yet kingdom of God. If any institution fails to plan, it plans to fail. I thank God for the Methodist Church that gives us a book of discipline, a book of resolutions, a hymnal, and the Bible as our primary roadmaps to guide our economy. I'm not being critical of any church that does it differently. I'm just expressing my appreciation of the Methodist approach to ministry. I especially appreciate our systems of accountability for each of us, pastor or lay, who accept and administer that system. Jesus told John and each of us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. In these scriptures, I believe that Jesus is not ordaining a system of self-mutilation for our sins and worldly failures, but instead is alerting us to the hell that awaits those who must 
do it my way. In the economy of God, each participant should be offered the utmost from his highest. A right economy in the church flourishes best on good works and goodwill, but which maintains a process for removing ineffective leaders and applies things that keep itself focused on making disciples for Christ. This means that the system can function best when each person is given the greatest opportunity to be sanctified on earth and readied for the eternal gathering place called heaven. In the real, it means folks in the church who are asked to lead, lead with both wisdom and integrity and with the joy of the Lord as their strength. And folks who follow are not just pretenders, but intenders who des whose desire is to reach the promised salvation and glory by doing the best that is in them for the glory of Christ. And each of us should keep our hands, feet, and eyes on Christ the Christ of our deliverance, so that we can enter eternal life whole and holy. I ask you all to remember that it's the economy, saints. And Jesus still says in Matthew's chapter 11, verses 28 and 30, Come to me. All who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's the economy, saints. It's the economy. Amen. Perhaps there's someone who has not been included in the economy of God in the coming reign of Jesus. I don't know who you are, where you are. I just know that Jesus is available to you. And he bids us to come, just as we are. Amen.
we are in the process of asking some of you to step up and take leadership positions. I hope when you're asked, you will not think of what you've done before, but what you can offer more effectively to the economy of the church by accepting and doing your best. Now, I forgot to mention, sometimes in the church we have to get rid of some bad apples. Thankfully, we don't have to do that here. Amen? Amen. But sometimes folks are reluctant to step up because they say, well, I can't do that or I've never done that. Well, trust me, if you apply yourself, you can learn. And I always say it. People cannot ask me for things that I do not have or things that I cannot do. For we confess with our lips that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And I pray as you're contacted for these positions that you will remember that I can do all things including this task, Pastor, that you asked me to do that I don't want to do and never have wanted to do it and ain't going to do it even if you ask me. Amen? Amen. Pray about it. That's right. Amen. And now to him who is able to keep us. And even if we fall, he's able to pick us up, dust us off. And then he promises to present us before the throne of grace to the Almighty God, that we too might be able to enter the kingdom of heaven, whole and holy, because of Christ. Go in peace and be glad. Amen.
Salome is dying. 